Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Dan Richard Fishing. And today we're gonna to be talking about something that is pretty big in the world of fishing and that is lithium batteries. You know, there's kind of two technologies that are kind of taking over the fishing world right now. One is, you know, active sonar like panoptics and stuff like that. And the other one is the switch to lithium batteries. So before we get into it guys, I wanna thank Dean and his team over at Miller Tech Lithium Batteries. Thank you so much to these guys. They patiently answered all of my questions while I was researching this video and really, really helped me figure out what I wanted to talk about. And again, what's true and what's not? What are the myths in the world of lithium batteries? Now, Miller Tech Batteries, guys, in case you don't know, they are one of the top brands being used by professionals these days. You've got guys like David Dudley, Jacob Wheeler, Brian Latimer, Brian Thrift, John Voiles, you got uh, Fred Rumbanis, Adrian Avina, Mark Daniels Jr., Dustin Connell, James Worldwide Watson, Cody Meyer, and a whole bunch of other guys. There's like tons of pros that have switched to Miller Tech Lithium batteries. And then there's a bunch of other pros that have just switched to lithium in general. I'll put a link in the description below, guys, so you can go and check out Miller Tech batteries, all right? And you can go see what they offer. And of course, guys, don't forget, all I ask for in return as a thank you for putting these videos together, doing all this research is please just hit the like button, helps the channel grow, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notifications, blah, 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 all the YouTube stuff. And, and don't forget, I do like to blah, 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 blah a lot. So if you wanna skip the parts of the video that you wanna pay attention to, you can go on the timeline of the video below and just click on the different chapters, okay? Now let's talk about lithium. Okay, so first off, what is lithium, lithium batteries? Is this the same thing as lithium ion batteries that are in your phone or like in your power tools? The answer is most definitely a no. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries, okay? They are not lithium ion batteries and they're also known as LIFEPO4 batteries. Big, huge difference, okay? One of the main differences is safety. So I'm sure you guys have probably seen on YouTube or you've heard of this happening before where lithium ion batteries just like spontaneously caught fire, okay? And this is because as soon as lithium ion hits uh, the moisture in the air when it's exposed, if you cut the battery, it can explode or instantly catch on fire. So uh, lithium iron phosphate does not do that. It will not catch on fire if it cracks, it opens, it leaks. So, you know, if the battery drops or if you're in an accident, God forbid, um, you don't have to worry about the battery catching on fire. So definitely not the same thing. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about why lithium is better than lead acid based batteries. So this includes like AGM and gel batteries and regular flood filled. First, you can completely discharge a lithium battery, all right? So a lithium iron phosphate battery, you can basically discharge this thing down to 2% without damaging the battery and then recharge it fully. Whereas a lead acid battery, you can only discharge them to about 30, 40%. I usually say like 30, 35% before you actually risk damaging the battery. Um, and what happens is, as you get, uh, because of the sulfite process, the sulfating, it creates, creates crystallization on your plates. And anyway, that's what, what shortens the lifespan of these batteries. So you cannot drain these regular batteries, whereas lithium ion, you get the full charge. So when you think of amp hours, um, you can actually only use 60 to 70% of the rated amp hours that are on a lead acid battery without damaging it. Whereas with a lithium battery, if it says 100 amp hours, you can get those full 100 amp hours and you don't have to worry about damaging the battery. Okay, second, lithium batteries provide the full 13.4 to 12.8 volts throughout the entire bandwidth of the battery. So whether the battery is at 100% capacity or zero, well, that's a 2% capacity, you'll still get your full voltage between 13.4 and 12.8, which lead acid batteries do not do. The more you drain the battery, the more the voltage drops off. So if you've really drained your battery, uh, let's say you're hitting 40, 35%, you'll notice you're only pulling like 11 volts. And when you go and crank your battery and you've got it on a multimeter, you'll see it drop to like four and sometimes your motor won't even start, okay? So that is eliminated with lithium batteries. Number three, so number three is the fact that you have so much more life on a lithium battery, okay? So lead acid batteries are good for about 200 charging cycles and that'll give you around four to five years um, then after that you need to change them. Some people go through them once a year. Lithium batteries are good for a full charge 2,000 times. And of course, you never actually fully drain your lithium battery. It's just, unless you go and use it three days in a row without charging it, you'll never fully drain it. So 
if you actually charge it when it's, you know, let's say 50% capacity at the end of each day, you'll get like 5,000 charge cycles out of it. And that's good for about 15 years of life, okay? So just imagine you have the same battery, it doesn't suffer any kind of you know, lifetime drainage or any lack of performance. It stays consistent for 15 years. That is insane. Number four. Number four is actually one of the biggest reasons why people change. Let's, let's put aside the whole, you know, power consumption, all that aside. It's weight. So a average group 31 lead acid battery weighs about 60 pounds, anywhere between 55 and 60 pounds. I mean, they weigh a ton. A similar size battery with the same amp hours in lithium actually weighs around 20 to 25 pounds. That is an incredible weight saving. So a lot of bass boats have four batteries on board. You've got uh, three for your 36 volt trolling motor and you've got your main starting battery. It's four bat. You'll save 160 pounds of weight. That's like a whole person sitting in your boat that you've just removed. So you'll obviously get better fuel consumption, better speed, all that good stuff. So weight savings is a gigantic factor. Another advantage is the uh, drain speed when your battery's idle. So when your battery's charged and you just let it sit there on the ground or sit in your boat and it's not doing anything and it's not connected to anything, um, a lead acid battery will actually drain slowly but surely over time. Everywhere, anywhere between four and 5%. Lithium batteries drain at a maximum rate of 3%. So even just letting the battery sit there, uh, it loses power about half half the speed that lead acid based batteries do. Okay, here's another big myth a lot of people that have said is they say, I've heard that lithium batteries have way too much voltage and they overheat very easily. So there's a reason why this actually kind of exists in people's minds and it's because it actually is or used to be true. So full size lithium marine batteries actually output 100 amps of power, okay? So these things are very, very strong with a very high voltage, okay? So when they were first being used, they did have overheating problems, that is true. So the very first generations of these lithium batteries had a lot of problems with overheating, overcharging, undercharging, could even potentially damage the electrical system uh, of your motor, the charging system that your motor produces, uh, could even damage that. So that's why a lot of people got a little scared of lithium, but there's been great advancements in what's called the BMS, okay? This is the battery management system. So the BMS is the brain of the battery, okay? It's, think of it as like a computer for the battery. So this is what controls the output of the battery in terms of voltage, in terms of amperage. This is what controls the charging speed and discharge rates uh, and does the heat monitoring. It does the diagnostics for the battery. It basically just maintains the battery health and makes sure that the battery isn't doing anything crazy. So the BMS systems have come a long way in just the last couple of years. And in fact, this is why MTech is one of the best batteries because they have what's considered probably one of the most robust uh, BMS units in any available lithium battery at this time. So this is why these guys are number one. So unlike other lithium battery manufacturers uh, that use 100 amp BMS systems for 100 amp batteries, MTech actually uses 120 amp BMS systems and they are also commercial grade. They're pretty much the most robust you can buy and they're actually made by the number one manufacturer of lithium BMS systems. So that's why, again, MTech is considered one of the best. Now, it is important to note that all lithium batteries, all lithium batteries are actually made in China, okay? So right off the bat, you know, if you're looking for something that's made elsewhere, it doesn't really exist. They can be designed in the USA, but they're actually manufactured all in China. I mean, that's just the way it is. But again, there's a huge difference between different manufacturers and the grade of cells. So MTech uses grade A cells. They overproduce, they basically have redundancy in all of their BMS systems and all of the hardware is all oversized, extremely robust. So again, you know, this is what makes MTech so popular in the professional angling world and why so many pros use their products. So when you're shopping around for lithium batteries, always make sure that the BMS is rated at least 20 amps higher than what the battery is rated for, okay? Okay guys, another big rumor, all right? This one I've actually seen, this is literally being argued right now. I've seen anglers talking about this very thing and that's the fact that if something goes wrong with your lithium battery, it can damage the electrical system of your motor and the charging system. So that means you should not be using lithium batteries as a starting battery, okay? So this should not be connected to your big engine to start your engine. Guys, seriously, 
It's not true anymore. Get over it. You can use it as a starting battery, okay? They exist. To be fair, this actually used to be true. So there are still many lithium battery sellers out there, manufacturers that don't offer a starting battery, okay? They're simply not robust enough. They're not designed to handle that cranking output that's needed for the motor. And the BMS system simply just can't handle uh, the input from the motor as well as, again, outputting the amperage that's required for starting. But there are some manufacturers that have designed, that have put in the R&D and have created uh, batteries that are specifically made for starting those big motors that are on your bass boats, okay? And MTech, of course, is one of them. So the perceived danger with these batteries is because of that high amperage, high voltage output, if the BMS fails, it'll send that full power draw to your motor and just completely annihilate your system. And in fact, let's pull up on the screen. I wanna show you a quote. This is an actual quote from a fishing forum that I'm on that I just, just saw a couple of months ago. Basically, this was a discussion about why you shouldn't use uh, lithium batteries or why you should and, and this guy here went ahead and, and posted this so if any of the cells have a problem the bms disconnects the load if the bms were to disconnect while the motor is running it will burn up the charging system not likely to damage alternator but high risk of taking out the pcm due to high voltage so in the case of mtech batteries if the if the bms detects any kind of problem with the battery as mentioned it will completely disconnect the battery from the entire charging system. So there's no, no issues in terms of sending any kind of high voltage to the charging system, any kind of crazy high amperage, burning out the system will not happen. Now, in terms of once the battery is disconnected, it isn't true that your PCM is at risk from the high voltage from the charging system. The charging system will detect that there's a battery disconnect and that power simply just will not go anywhere. It will not affect the system or anything. I mean, that's why these are, these are being used on Yamaha, Mercs. I mean, every major outboard these are compatible with, and there's a reason why. Otherwise, you'd be hearing about burnt out charging systems and burnt out PCMs or affected alternators, you know, all over the place, and it's just not the case. Another great question that's being asked is, do I need a special charger for lithium batteries? And it's kind of a yes and a no. You don't need a special charger, but you do need to make sure that your bank charger or whatever charger you use does work with lithium, okay? So NOCO sells uh, several models that work great with lithium batteries. They auto detect whether it's a lead acid battery, you know, if it's gel, AGM, or if it's lithium and it'll charge it accordingly. But most of these manufacturers, most of these big brands also sell a compatible charger. So for example, for MTech, MTech actually sells a four bank charger that's very reasonably priced that auto detects the battery and it'll charge your lithium batteries, okay? And yes, it's got four banks, but I mean, you don't have to use all four. So if you've got three batteries on your boat, you just use three banks, two banks, you know, whatever it is that you need. So just make sure that you're on board bank charger is compatible with lithium and you're good to go it doesn't need to be any more you know spectacular than that the other thing you can do is you can simply contact the battery manufacturer and just ask them hey which chargers work with your batteries which ones do you recommend check out the link in the description below i'll put a link to the noco series battery chargers that work with lithium um, as well as the mtech one but again you know you guys use whatever you like Next, you're probably thinking, what about the price? Lithium seems awfully expensive, and at around you know $1,000 or less, they come off as pretty expensive. Now, don't forget, just a couple of years ago, or even maybe a year ago, these things were $1,500, $1,800, so they've already come down quite a bit in price. Now, do bear in mind that the price only seems expensive up front, okay? So when you look at the initial price point, let's say it's $1,000, like, that's super expensive, but it's actually not that bad. So if you think about it, the battery is going to last you 15 years. In 15 years, you'll go through four or five uh, regular lead batteries at, you know, at that same timeline. So if you think about it, a good AGM battery, like if you want to buy a high quality AGM battery, they're about $250. So if you were to buy four of them over the next 15 years, it's $1,000, okay? So it actually works out to about the same thing, except you get all those superior benefits that we just discussed earlier. So you pay about the same thing over a 15 year span, but you get better discharge rates, you get better discharge bandwidth, you got a battery that you can use the full amp hour rating, the full capacity. Uh, it's, just, it's just a better product overall. And in the end, you pay about the same. Currently an MTech 100 amp hour battery is about 825 bucks. So compared to 1500, 1600 a year ago, the prices are really coming down. Okay, next up, let's talk about warranties. Okay, so warranties are something you need to pay attention to, okay? Because the warranties are all over the place in the industry. Now MTech, it is a five year bumper to bumper, I sound like a used car salesman, 
uh, five year warranty, okay? So it's complete total warranty, five years. But there's other guys that claim 10 year warranties, but be very careful that these are not partial warranties, okay, where they are prorated. So prorated warranties mean that the older the battery, the you only get a percentage. So let's say you get full warranty for two years and then in year three you get 90%, blah, blah, blah. So these guys that say it's a 10 year warranty, for example, at the end of the 10 years, you might only get like 25% back. So read the fine print on the warranties, okay, and make sure that when they say five year warranty, it's five year total replacement warranty, okay? Read the fine print. So last but not least, should you upgrade? Should I upgrade? Uh, at this point, guys, I think the only constraint that you need to evaluate is, is the initial cost within your budget? If the initial cost is within your budget, okay, so if you're good with the with that first you know, $1,000 or $850 per battery, then I say go for it. You get a superior battery, you get a much longer life, you get better power bandwidth, better discharge, you, Overall, you're just gonna have a much better power management, better power experience, and much more battery life in your boat than you will with any lead acid-based technology. So really, the only reason why you may be hesitant is can you, you know, can you spend that much money right up front? In terms of me personally, I think it's time. So what's gonna happen for me is, as soon as my current trolling motor batteries are due to be replaced, maybe in the next couple of years, I will likely be switching to full lithium in the boat uh, and changing out my charger that I currently have uh, because it isn't lithium compatible. It's just getting too attractive to, to get these batteries. And not only that, I'm gonna be upgrading electronics on my boat. So, you know, when you're starting to run pan optics and 360 and three graphs and, you know, you've got your live wells on, your aerator, and any other accessories that are on your boat, your, your radio, let's say, you know, the power consumption is starting to get super high on these boats, so we're not gonna have much of a choice. If we wanna be able to stay out there for 10 hours or 12 hours to fish, uh, I think moving to lithium is probably gonna be uh, a must do uh, very, very soon for me. So probably gonna start, uh, and I'm actually hoping to pick up a lithium battery very soon, or at least to get one, and uh, test it out and see how it does. Just run it for the entire day. And throughout the day, we'll check and see what kind of battery life it's got left and uh, do a full review uh, on the channel. So that's kind of where that's at. So yes, I will be upgrading uh, very, very soon, I think in the next year or two. And that is it for today, guys. I hope you found this video super helpful. You know, uh, I know there's a lot of questions out there about lithium, so hopefully this addressed some of the questions and concerns that you guys had. But of course, as always, if you have any questions, feedback, comments, whatever, Go ahead and send me a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And of course, I love interacting with you guys as much as possible. And don't forget as always guys, if you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit the like button. You know, if you learned something, you found this beneficial, smack the like, make sure you're subscribed, all that good stuff. And, and we are so close. While I'm recording this video, we're like 150 subscribers away from hitting the 5,000 mark. So that means uh, in the next coming, in the coming days, I'm gonna be shooting my 30 days of baits video where I'm gonna go shopping for 30 baits that I love. And every day on Instagram, I'm gonna post a little mini clip of all the baits. So every day it'll be one bait. And at the end of the 30 days, I'm giving away the entire lot to somebody, to a lucky subscriber, uh, both on YouTube and Instagram. So that's gonna be coming up very, very soon. Okay, so keep an eye out for that video and you might win yourself hundreds of dollars of my favorite baits. Okay guys, so thank you so much. I really appreciate all your support, all that good stuff. We'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.